This is Gary Atensa with CNTV, and today we're in Denver, Colorado. I'm here with Apple Remodeling. Since 1983, they have been your go-to local remodels for hundreds of Denver homeowners. I'm here with Ted Fawcett, who is the owner, founder. Ted, thanks so much for joining us here today. Um, quite honestly, you've got three generations of builders. You've been doing this over 30 years. You could pretty much say this is in your blood. <laughs> Share with me a little bit how you got involved in this type of industry. Yes, my father was a builder for many years, and he built mainly commercial buildings. So he raised me and my four brothers to be builders as well. And uh, once I went to uh, Colorado State University, I never left the state of Colorado. I decided to stay here and build, and uh, we've done over a 1,000 projects now. And uh, it's been quite a career, and we've done some very interesting things, and it's been a lot of fun. Excellent. I mean, quite honestly, there's a lot of contractors out there across Denver. Many of those dabble in remodeling. Um, this is your specialty. This is what you guys do, remodeling. Why was that important when you decided to put the company together? Well, I did grow up around new construction, but again, it was mainly commercial. What I found was that in remodeling, the people are home, and it's hard to find good contractors who can come in and work for a client when they're trying to live in the home. So uh, I gravitated towards it because I'm somewhat of a people person. It's good to interact with the clients. And, um, you know, it, it, a lot of the people that I work with, my employees, my subcontractors, they seem to be of the same mind. They really like working, helping out people. Excellent. I mean, it's, it's kind of cool to be able to take an existing home that you once maybe fell in love with and you're ready to fall in love with it again, giving it a facelift, transforming it. Um, and is this an enjoyable line of work for you that you that you enjoy that whole process? Definitely. Uh, we used to take a lot of before and after pictures and we got up to about 500 projects and somehow fell off of uh, doing that. But we still have clients who send us before and after pictures. And you know, some of the most satisfying things that we do are when we come back to work for a client again. And they tell us about the parties they've had in their kitchen or how they, you know, we've we worked for some clients for over 20 years. And uh, one client I recall, we worked for over 20 years ago. Um, of course, I met the children. They've already graduated college now and off to their own lives. And uh, you, know, you get to meet people and you get to also, uh, you know, be a part of their lives a little bit as, as, as long as you do a great job. And uh, great. we try to do that. Wonderful. Let's start off with one of those uh, favorite areas of the home that you guys can work in. And that would be right here, the kitchen. Uh, we're talking about the hub of the home. Like you said, people throwing parties here. This is, a, this is a room in the home that not only your private family gets to see, but guests get to see. Um, not only can it look great, but it's also got to be functional. Yes, and we do our own designs in-house. And one of the things that we focus on when we do a kitchen remodel is we will... We'll, most people will, will get one design from someone they buy a design from. We will do at least three right out of the gates. And we will keep working on that design, sometimes up to six before a client says, that's exactly what we want. But one of the key ingredients in a kitchen is to make it where people can gather. You know, the, the area of, with a bar or an island where people can sit at or a peninsula where people can visit. Uh, it, it's a key ingredient to any kitchen remodel today. And, uh, uh, you know, so that's how people end up telling me later on, yeah, this is the, where the gathering place is. I believe that, absolutely. I mean, it's amazing to me that one of the most important rooms when it comes to having your house dated, you can tell it's kind of a dated look, is your kitchen. We're talking, it's a wonder what new countertops can do, backsplash can do, new cabinetry, even like you said, the new venting system you're putting in place. These are all things that really kind of can modernize a home. Definitely. Uh, if you... If you go look at any of the show homes or if you go to if you speak to people who are going to purchase homes, um, they will tell you that the kitchens and the baths are the two most critical areas as far as you know, once they've established, OK, this home is big enough for me. Uh, what are the kitchen? What does the kitchen look like? What does the bathroom look like? So uh, whether you're having guests over or you're trying to resell at some point, uh, but, but mainly for people who people who hire us, hire us they want to customize the home for themselves. And uh, having a nice kitchen uh, not only works well for them, but it also, they can show it off to their neighbors and whenever they have friends and family over. 
Excellent. I mean, um, it totally makes sense because, like you say, one of the places we spend a lot of time of right at the beginning of the day is our master uh, bathroom or family bathroom. Um, share with me what people are able to do in some of those, those areas as well. A lot of the bathrooms that we renovate have some lowered ceilings, some soffits, usually over a shower or over a vanity. We automatically take those out so that we can raise up the ceilings. Uh, we will usually raise the shower head. We'll put in uh, um, a tile where maybe there was carpet or, or heaven forbid, linoleum on the floor. We'll a lot of times do adult height vanities. Um, we will move plumbing if we need to. A lot of people like large showers. So today we're doing a lot of large showers with shampoo niches and, and uh, benches. And uh, you know a lot of those old plate glass mirrors we're getting rid of and we'll do a framed mirror with a sconce light on each side and getting rid of the bar lights over the top. Uh, so, you know, with the finishes available today, the, t the tiles available today, it's very nice to be able to uh, look at those before and afters because it's not only more functional, but, uh, you know, the bathroom can be bigger, it can be brighter, and it can certainly uh, reflect the, the style of the client. Person. What a great way to start or end your day right there in the master bedroom. Um, in Colorado, we love our basements. I guess it's a good thing. Is this still a cost-effective way um, to get the best bang for your buck when it comes to remodeling through a basement? It's the most cost-effective way to get more living space. space. And uh, a lot of times we'll come into a property that some folks have maybe just purchased or uh, you know, they might have lived there for a while, but they haven't been using the basement because it was unfinished. They might store things there. Sure. But either the family grows or they decide that they are now able to afford to finish that basement. And that basement will become their favorite part of the house because Absolutely. it's brand new. And because it's a blank slate, we can design it any way they want. I love that. I mean, I mean, it used to be back in the day, you might use an unfinished basement, put a few bedrooms in, you know. Now we're talking about nothing short of amazing entertainment areas, theater areas, bars, exercise, playrooms. I and mean, you pretty much have a little bit of everything you can do down there. Absolutely. We've, we have put in, uh, as you say, the, the home theaters. We've put in saunas. We've put in... Uh, you know, the bedrooms, the bathrooms, and, you know, uh, the pool table areas. But with the uh, uh, advent of all the high-tech equipment that you can get now, we've actually put in some pretty impressive theaters where people can have uh, guests over, watch the Super Bowl, uh, what have you. So, yes, it, it can be, it's a blank slate. You, you can do whatever you want down there. I love the blank slate part of it because a lot of times you buy a home and you don't have control over the top portion there, but maybe you have an unfinished basement. Downstairs, we're talking about they, they really get to be a part of that design, if you will. I mean, I imagine you guys give them probably even multiple options they can choose right out of the get-go there. Absolutely. That's one of the beauties of doing several designs. You know, we, I, will, I will talk to the client and I'll ask them how they want to use the space, and then I will draw at least three designs. And once they see it, sometimes we will use laser pointers and, and projectors and we'll just, I'll, actually, I'll bring my laptop out to the job site and we will design a little bit of it on site because if they just want to move a wall or two, it's easier to do with them holding a laser pointer pointing at, it, at the wall. Um, but every client should have a huge amount of input in the design. Nice. Um, we, we work with designers, but I found that my clients are usually better designers. Interesting. After all, it's going to be their home, right. and, and they know what they want there. Um, if you take somebody that's got a home, maybe they want, to, they want to add some extra space out there, maybe put in an addition. Once again, you provide many choices. You can either go out or you can go up. I mean, tell me what you have in pop tops as well as the ability to go out on a home. It's usually dictated by how much room they have on their lot to work with. And uh, if it's a ranch style home, obviously we can pop the top, we can go straight up. If it's a two story already, we can go out. Uh, on the job that we're on right now, we are in a ranch style home, but we had such a large lot, we could actually just go straight out because it's more cost effective. Speaking of cost effective, I imagine the pop tops have to help save a little bit. I mean, you save in some excavating as well as foundation work. Um, are, the, are the options pretty flexible when you're deciding what part of the home you want to pop up? Yes, we, we do have building department regulations that we have to obey. There are some bulk plane issues. So we can only go so high. 
on a certain part of the lot. So we have some restrictions, but because there's already a foundation, like you mentioned, and there's already the uh, plumbing and electrical infrastructure directly underneath that new addition, it is more cost effective sometimes to go up with a pop top. Interesting. Regardless of the job folks have out there, be it a remodel of a one room or a complete home or an addition or a pop-up, you really believe in a detailed estimate, basically utilizing your own software, making sure that folks know exactly what they're going to be paying for. Um, tell me a little bit about that. We have worked over the years to make sure that every part of our process is very user-friendly. And we don't like gray areas or confusion because sometimes that can lead to dissatisfaction with the client. So uh, we did develop our own software for our estimating. Our clients love it. They can see uh, at, a, at a glance almost exactly what they're getting so that it's included or not included. On a kitchen, we might have a 10-page estimate. And it's, it's user-friendly. They can see exactly what's in that estimate. We'll print that out, we'll give that to them. And if there's any, uh, ever any changes during a project, it's the same process. So nobody likes surprises, that's for sure, especially later on down the road. Um, regard, once they take that estimate, they decide to move forward with that. Uh, basically, you also make it pretty affordable for folks to be able to remodel or add on, um, even with payment options. Tell me a little bit more about that. I like to only ask 10% down. Uh, up front, when a client, especially a new client, um, they're hiring you and there's a relationship being built, but it's not quite built yet. And I don't want my clients to be uncomfortable. So we will ask them to give us 10% down to uh, let us do all of the permitting and, and designing and get them on our schedule. And then uh, every week and a half, two weeks, we'll give them a full accounting and Excel spreadsheet along with an invoice that says, here's the work we've done so far, and just pay for the work we've done so far. That helps us use the client's money to uh, take the project forward without them ever having more than 10% money invested in work that hasn't been done. That's a very fair approach and user-friendly approach for folks out there. Viewers, take a look at the bottom of the screen right there. What you're gonna see is their website. First of all, on the website, you can take a look at a lot of the projects they're able to offer you out there. We're talking about remodels of kitchens, baths, basements, um, garage areas. They can come in and do complete, uh, complete construction as well, but really they have been known for being the, the go-to guys when it comes to remodeling. Um, you can check out their website. They've got the contact information on there and also take a look at some of the testimonials as well, people they've been serving in the past. Um, you've been service serving the public for over 30 years that that uh, doesn't come by chance basically not only making sure the project is um, taken care of on the front end but you guys go even a step further we're talking about an anniversary inspection where you guys come back make sure that uh, everything's up to code yes when when we leave a project we leave it having done the very best job that we can and that doesn't mean, though, that things can't happen, a squeaky hinge or a, a, a drippy shutoff valve under a sink. So uh, we get one or none uh, warranty calls every year, which means we don't get to see our client again unless they want more work done. And sometimes that's a five-year turnaround time before they call us back. So at the end of each project, we set up an uh, anniversary inspection. A year from that day, we'll come back and just walk through the project look at the work that we did, and make sure that everything we built and that we're warranting is as good as they paid for. Interesting. I mean, from dedicated crew leaders to basically giving even, even your clients access to some of your vendors at a, at a discounted rate, these are all things that really have, uh, have made people enjoy doing work with you, like you say, not once, but even multiple times. Right. We, when we uh, sign a contract to do remodeling, we usually have a design done by then. If not, we'll go into the design phase. As soon as the design is completed and we are on the, we've got them on our schedule, we'll put together a shopping list for them and it will show exactly the things we need them to pick out. And then we'll also give them a list of wholesalers so that they can go to our accounts and they can buy at our cost, which is usually about 30% off. And they can afford better fixtures that way. They, they need the same fixtures that are on the shopping list, but by giving them that 30% discount without any markup from us, they can afford better things. And it, 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 it's another value added thing that we try to do so that whenever they think about doing a project 
a couple of years down the road, they'll always remember that we took good care of them. Excellent. Ted, you mentioned early on that basically you started this out um, with the family. You never left Colorado. Um, you are the local go-to guys when it comes to remodeling. Key thing there is local. You're proud of Colorado. Denver is your home. How important is giving back? It's very important. Um, we've got on our crew some people who have served in the armed forces Almost everyone is local and has lived here all their lives. And we've seen things like the uh, uh, Four Mile Canyon fire in, in Boulder back in 2010. Um, we, after that fire, we put together a, an airplane wash because one of my guys is a private pilot. And we brought the Denver Nuggets cheerleaders out. We brought the um, Salvation Army out. And we washed airplanes for charity and raised money for the people who had lost those homes. And there were about 169 homes lost. So, you know, those people had nothing. They didn't have toothbrushes. So it, it was good to give back that, uh, that time. You know, we do have our guys who will, they'll donate their time for Habitat for Humanity. They will, I've washed dishes down at the Crossroads uh, shelter to help out the homeless. And, um, it, you know, whenever we do a project, if there's any extra materials or if the, like or, if the material, the fixtures we're pulling out are worth reusing, we will call ARC or Habitat and we'll say, you know, please come get these things and we'll donate them. And they will give us a receipt that we can give our client that, so that they can write that off on their taxes. So it's a real win-win. Absolutely. Viewers, last time, take a look at the bottom of the screen right there. Once again, we're talking about Apple remodeling since 1983. Uh, they have been featured um, across the news media. They've been featured on House, also in publications. And you can find they're basically members also of uh, Team Dave Logan, as well as Angie's List. Uh, they've been awarded uh, some of the top 1% awards that remodelers get out there. And basically, this is a company that has been servicing not only new customers out there but repeat business for over 30 years that is apple remodeling love where you live this is gary atensi with cntv and if you don't know now you know